I'm president of Aura Corporation, and we've just enjoyed a marvelous talk from Nancy here, and she's right on, having been in the selling business for 50 years, I can tell you, you're right on. After three days of conference, these agents have been up for 12 hours a day. They were here on Sunday morning. They were excited. They were energized. Nancy was great. Best decision I could have made. Nancy, you did a fantastic job. You captured the audience. You're the greatest. You make people laugh. It was fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Fantastic. Nancy, Nancy you fabulous. Rock. Making customers for life, and that's the name of the game. The skills and techniques are useful at any organization. We're going to take home a lot from this program. Marvelous, marvelous program. Program for life. According to our special guest speaker, it's not that simple, okay? Common sense is not that common, according to her. She not only talks the talk, but most definitely walks the walk. Please, please, please join me in welcoming the one and only Nancy Friedman. What's up, baby? Thank You're the you, best. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Nancy Friedman is a gifted motivational business speaker with a proven track record. Nancy has been delivering her powerful motivational programs to audiences since 1983. The valuable information Nancy gives her audiences has helped set the standards for corporations and associations across the country. Nancy specializes in giving how-to techniques based on real-world experience techniques she has shared with companies worldwide to increase profits and gain a competitive edge. A two-time million dollar roundtable speaker, Nancy's quick wit and sense of humor make her a big hit with audiences of all sizes. Whether delivered to owners and managers or to frontline staff, Nancy's message hits home. Nancy is an internationally recognized authority on customer service. She has appeared on hundreds of television and radio programs worldwide, including the Today Show, CBS This Morning, Good Morning America, Canada Today, and the BBC. In addition to television and radio, she's also no stranger to the print medium, having been featured in respected newspapers and magazines like the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, Nation's Business, and the Financial Times. She's even written her own best-selling book. They probably talk with you. You're very important to your Nancy daughter. is perhaps best known as the telephone doctor. Thanks to her highly successful series of videos on customer service and telephone skills. The series is considered by many to be the most effective training package available today. With these credentials, it's no wonder major corporations and associations around the world choose Nancy Friedman to speak at their events. And now, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you, Nancy Friedman. I am Nancy Friedman, and you're entitled to a little information on me. I was born in Chicago, Illinois. You are not entitled to the year. <laughs> I started my career at WGN Television many, many years ago in the sales and service department. Several years after that, my husband bought a radio station in San Diego, California, and I helped set up the sales and service department of that radio station. 100% of my job is customer service contact. That's all I do all day long is talk to people. And over the years, we've learned techniques, techniques that work. Now, some of them are sales techniques, but that's okay. But let me tell you something. Life is a series of sales presentations. We are always selling somebody something. Our kids to eat dinner, our bosses for a raise, our wives for you know what, and our husbands for God knows what. We are always, <laughs> we are always selling somebody something. Somebody wrote a song, life is a cabaret, life is a bowl of cherries, bull. Life is a series of sales situations and how you make it work for you is the name of the game. Whew. Amen. Yes, I'm a professional actress, but I've taken everything I've learned on that stage and applied to what I do now for a living 365 days a year of my life, and that's customer service. And let me tell you something, my friends. There's no acting involved in what I do today. There's no role playing in what I do today. There are no lines to learn in what I do today. Today, what I do comes from my heart, going to go to your heart, and from your heart to your customer's heart, and then we will have a better place to live. Working with customers is not new. 
Those of you who are sitting here as publishers or high executives within your organization, you all know how to do it, right? My goodness, that's how you got where you are. You know how to make a phone call. You know how to take a phone call. You know how to make a presentation. You know how to make the negotiation. You know how to close the sale. You're very good. That's how you got where you are. Let me ask you another question. After you make that phone call, and after you take that phone call, and after you make that presentation, and after you make the negotiation, and after you close the sale, what happens then? Does that client, does that person, does that prospective advertiser now become the property of the people you left behind to run your office right now as we speak? And let me ask you another question. How many of you feel right now that the people you left behind to run your office are as well skilled on customer service and satisfaction as you are? Oh golly, if we could clone you, it would be, it would be great. We have three of you, and two of you, and four of you, and five of you. Yeah, I'd like five of you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Usually I end up picking the CEO. Who'd I get here? Jerry Smith. Yeah. Yeah, you stay after school, okay? No problem. Yeah. We know that more business is lost due to poor service and poor treatment than poor product. And I find that statement so incredibly important, I repeat it every time I say it. More business is lost due to poor service and poor treatment than poor product. You and the companies represented here today don't have poor product. It's how you treat the people that count. Isn't that why you go to the same place to get your hair done, to buy a suit, to get a jacket, to buy an automobile, to go to church? We like to be treated nice. We like it when people go, hi, Bob, good to see you. You look super. Hey, how's the family? Happy birthday. Say we like it when people treat us nice. And I'll tell you something else. We will pay more for better service. You bet we will. Who here has not gone downtown, don't care what part of this beautiful country you're from, gone downtown to a very expensive restaurant. We've all done that every once in a while. Overpaid, we've all done that every once in a while. And walked out and said, man, that was an expensive meal. But wasn't the service great? Wasn't the service great? Wasn't the service great? Many years ago, I picked up my telephone, and I called my insurance agent, and I told him to cancel all my policies. No small job. We were his largest account. I don't need to tell anybody in this room what happens when you lose your largest account. The man had coronary arrest. I heard him fall off his chair. He picked himself up, and he said, my gosh, Nancy, what happened? So I told him, your people stink. They're so rude. They're so abrupt. They're so unfriendly. They're so unhelpful, and I don't want to be treated like that. Thank you very much. I won't be treated like that. He said, you know what? What, Nancy, you're right. When I call your office, I'm treated like a king. <laughs> I said, Michael, we treat our wrong numbers better than you treat your customers. <laughs> You'll get that later. <laughs> He said, would you do me a favor? I said, what's that? He said, would you come to my office and would you show my people what you guys do? Well, I don't know about anybody in this room, but when somebody reaches out to touch me, I do want to touch him back. So I said, yeah, I'll go to your office. So I went to his office out of love. It was the last time I did it out of love, let me tell you that. But I went to his office. Michael said, Nancy's going to speak with us. So I stood up in front of these six, 17, 18 people looking at me, much like you're looking at me right now. Huh, what you gonna say? And I said, well, at our office, we say please. And one woman said, Hilda, write that down. That's a good one. And she wrote down please. <laughs> I said, we say you're welcome. There's another one, Hilda, write that one down. And she wrote down, you're welcome. I said, we say thank you. We say have a nice day. Well, that's what we do at our office. I don't think I spoke 15 minutes. Had another cup of coffee, had another donut. So thank you very much. I got to go. And I started to walk out the door. The president of the insurance company said, wait a minute, Nancy. I said, what's wrong? He said, well, nothing's wrong. I, I just wanted to thank you. I said, well, you're welcome. He says, no, 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 no. We really learned some new things. Came home, had a drink with my husband that night. He hadn't known what I, was, what I did that day. I said, Dick, let me tell you what I did today. So I told him about calling Michael and canceling the policies and the cookies and the donuts and the round table and Hilda and please and thank you. I said, Dick, as I was walking out the door, the president of the insurance company said, thank you very much. We really learned some new things, things, Dick, that you and I do like breathing in and breathing out. I don't understand. And Dick looked me right in the eye and said, Nancy, don't ever be surprised. Nobody has ever shown them. The second of the five forbidden phrases is in memory of my father, who when I was a little girl, I was never allowed to say a certain four-letter word. Wasn't allowed to say that one either, Phil. I was never allowed to say I can't. My daddy would look at me and say, what's the matter, Nancy? I didn't ask you to fly. Tell me you don't want to. Tell me you don't have time. Tell me you won't. But don't you tell me you can't, Nancy, because you haven't tried. I was in a hotel much like this a while back, went in to buy a little item, took it up to the room, opened the box, and it wasn't what I wanted. So, like any other woman, I put it back in the box, took it back downstairs to the woman in the, in the uh, shop. It was the same woman that waited on me. And uh, I, looked, I said, do you remember me? She said, mm-hmm. I said, well, when I opened this up, I saw that it wasn't what I needed, and I would like my money back, and I placed it on the counter. She said, we can't do that. 
I said, sure you can. Just open the drawer, give me $7.45. You can do that. She said, we can't do that. I said, what are you talking about you can't do that? We can't do that. I said, I understand. I speak English. I don't understand what you're saying. She said, we can't do that. I said, don't, say, don't tell that to me any, anymore. She said, we can. You can have anything else in the store. I said, I don't want anything else in the store. I want my money back. She said, we, that's the only thing this woman said to me. I said, I'll tell you what. It's not what I want here. You keep it. And I left it there. I mean, my husband taught me years ago, only argue when you care. I couldn't have cared less. As a matter of fact, I was happy. I knew I had a story for the program. Where would this go? Where would this go? I, I didn't even give it a second thought. I spent more on my lipstick than I did on that dumb thing. Did the program came down the next morning, signing out at the, at the registration desk, the general manager comes running up to me, Mrs. Friedman, Mrs. Friedman, I said, yes. He said, just want to let you know we've credited your account for $7.45. I looked at him, I said, I thought you can't do that. <laughs> I had this on a briefcase uh, a while back, and I set the briefcase beside me, went over my notes before the program, as I always do, and a red light, the cab driver stopped, and he turned around, he said, excuse me, ma'am, he said, I can stand it no longer. What the heck is the telephone doctor? I said, well, I'm so glad you asked. I said, I'm Nancy Friedman, I go around the country training corporations to do a better job when the public calls, and just in general, treat their customers very, very special. And he turned around and looked at me and said, you must be very busy. <laughs> <laughs> Very dynamic. She did a, did a wonderful job. As uh, we saw from Nancy today with an excellent presentation, that it's more than just how do you answer the phone. That's just one step. It's just one small part of the process, but it's bigger than that. I think it's things we all know and understand, but we just uh, don't, uh, don't implement them for whatever reason. So she kind of put the urgency there for us to do those things. How do we communicate? in general with everybody and how well are we doing that and how much better can we be and how much better can our businesses be if we learn to do that more effectively. Today it was a 10. Very good. So her ideas and her thoughtfulness really inspired our people I think to go back and, and bring this home to our own folks.